Holly Clifton, welcome back to Undisputed. Hey, thanks Wait, for having me. You're the star of those Ganley Auto commercials, right? <laughs> hey, you, know, you watch, watch every night. Game. I watch every night. <laughs> I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. Allie mm -hmm. Clifton covers the Cavaliers, and it's a tough team to cover, a lot of personalities, a lot of egos, and you do the best job of asking tough questions of players who will answer those tough questions. And the way, it's an art form, as Shannon will tell you. There's yes. a way to ask them. Yes. And there's not a way to ask they, them. They, so I appreciate that. They trust you that. and they respect you. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's why they feel comfortable and they'll open up to you where maybe someone else, they'll give them a generic answer. Mm -hmm. But they will go in depth with you. They do. Even on of, TV. I just take a lot of pride in being a former athlete and, yeah. and having a feel for the moment and right. trying to really take that into each and you interview. you played basketball at Toledo. Toledo. Toledo yeah. Rockets, right? Toledo Rockets, yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, the biggest story around the Cavs this week was Kevin Love's article about his panic attacks and mental health. Were you surprised or how surprised were you when you read that? You know, I don't think surprised is the word. I think it's more so, wow, Kev, respect. You know, to be dealing with a situation where you probably feel everything but strength, uh, to have the strength and the courage to understand your platform, the impact your platform can make, and also what it can do for him personally. Mm -hmm. Um, I respect Kevin for that. I applaud Kevin for that. Um, and I think for him, the one thing, ever since he's come to Cleveland, Kevin has been about winning. Kevin has been about the game, the organization. He's never been a distraction. Uh, he comes in. He's a professional. He does his job. He does his work at a high level. And so to think that he's been going through this and then to be able to actually come forward and make it known, respect. Mm -hmm. You know, that's tough. Do you think he would have come forward had the the meeting, the come to Jesus meeting that they had after the Thunder game? Do you think he would have been able to have the strength to come forward had that meeting not taken place? You know, I think there was a, a culmination of things because his panic attack happened in November, mm -hmm. you know, and then the meeting does happen to which he actually made it known after that Thunder game. He was sick. That wasn't a panic attack. Right. He was sick. Uh, but then you've got a guy in DeMar DeRozan that he gives a lot of credit to as well. And so when you know that you're not alone, it allows you to kind of gain that confidence and that courage, again, be able to come forth. And I think, I think it's huge for Kevin, that step, not mm -hmm. only personally, uh, but also now inside that locker room to have that understanding. So what did you hear about what did go on in that Flashpoint meeting when the legitimacy of Kevin's illness was questioned by some Cavaliers, including one who is no longer there, Isaiah Thomas. You know, I think what happened inside, because I'm a former player, mm -hmm. what happened inside that meeting stays inside that meeting. Uh, I, I'm a big component and um, believer in understanding that those things stay amongst the team. Um, I think at the end of the day, it was a – a point of the team in the season that things were not going well. And we all saw that from the outside. Right. And that's what it felt like on the inside as well. There was a group of individuals who had been so successful. You know, you're bringing veterans together who have a, a, very, um, a very unique way in their own right, their styles. You don't have young players that you're bringing together to mesh. You've got veteran players who have very established styles and you're trying to make that work. Right. And, and it wasn't. And so I think from a standpoint of, you know, maybe Kev was the focal point just because it happened around that Thunder game. Um, I think that kind of there was a misconception about what actually happened. Um, but that, that remains to be inside that locker okay, room. So what was your perception as a media member of Isaiah and why he didn't quite fit in the locker room? My, my take with Isaiah is um, here's a guy who had a lot of success in a system in Boston, in a system in Boston, and he then had seven months with a lower body injury that he did not play. And now you're trying to come back and fit into a, a established system, you know, who- Not a system built for you. One that, you know, it's gonna take time, but at the end of the day, it just, it wasn't working. And I think it was all about basketball with Isaiah. You know, but at the same time, it was gonna take, it's going to take time for him. You know, and I still think it will. He had a tough injury. I mean, it's career-threatening. It, absolutely. And, and so I think to assume and think that it's anything but basketball with IT, mm. I don't think that's fair. Are you surprised that it didn't work, it didn't work out better than it did? I, I think the, 
the thought there is that you you hoped, right? You know, because there's a lot of accomplished players inside that locker room, and on paper it looked great. Mm -hmm. It did. Um, and, and I actually applaud Kobe Altman in the front office for being able to make the moves that they made at the trade deadline to understand. Like Kobe said, you've got a, a player, a generational player that dictates outcomes and it's not working. And if we are going to maximize the opportunity that we have right now to make these moves, then we have to do that. And he did that. So how did LeBron's mood change in, in the way he would deal with the media mm -hmm. pre trades, post trades? Did you see a big swing in his, his sort of daily mood? The way he handles the media never changes. He's, he is a professional. I think he's consistent. Mm -hmm. He's going to give you his time, and he's going to give you his truth. But when it comes to on the court, winning is what it's all about. And when you're not winning, it's not fun. Right. And so I think when you put that now back inside of LeBron, and right now it's going to take some time, of course. You don't want to hear that, but it's going to take some time. They're going to win some games. They're going to lose some games. They're going to look good. They're not going to look good. Uh, but I think right now what you have – is a, a group that is built around him, those pieces, the youth, the athleticism, the ability to play the style of play since Ty Lue took over that they want to play with pace. Mm -hmm. How do you play with pace? You get stops. You use your athleticism. Mm -hmm. you, you use your length. Now, that's going to take time to get together, but I think it's going to transfer into the, the fun, the energetic, the vibrant LeBron that you want to see. And that's the thing that you hear, rejuvenated, reinvigorated, do you see a different LeBron? I do. Of course I do. Because it's winning. You know, and, and I know that we've talked about, you know, since the trade, it maybe hasn't resulted, mm -hmm. but there is the outlook that's different than it had been. Right. Kobe said they were marching a slow death. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Because it wasn't fitting on the court. You have to make a change. And they chose to do that. And there is potential with this roster. There are still championship expectations right. inside that locker room. So you had an up close and personal seat last night yeah. to the 39, 8, and 10. Was that one of your more impressive performances this year, given the, the magnitude on the road? They're trying to hold off for that third seat. They're trying to hold off a lot of teams for that third seat. The Nuggets are fighting hard to try to stay in the eighth slot. They slid out, but that game was contentious, especially late. I heard you talk in the break. Seeds don't matter. <laughs> Seeds don't matter when it comes to LeBron. Uh-oh. You heard that still? I believe Fantasy in that. Seeds don't I heard him say that. Like and that. I also heard you guys say they're great on the road right now. <coughs> they're four and zero. on the, the road is tough. Not so great at home so far. Two and four at the New Cavs. Not great. But in mm -hmm. the, in the playoffs, seeds only mustard. So is it possible <laughs> that the New Cavs are feeling a little more pressure at home? Yeah, I, I would I would yeah. agree with that. I think in front of the fan base, uh, um, the just the anxious nerves. Uh, I, I do feel that because on the road it's a totally different ball game right now. You know, they play free, they mm. play with one another, and it's just them. Mm. You know, it's that whole bunker mentality on the road, us against the world, and um, I, I do see that. I see a, a vast difference between home and road. What's going on with JR? JR didn't play a minute in the fourth, but he played <clears throat> 24 minutes. He's struggling with his shot, and he's not played. And he shot, I think, once after the, well, once after the uh, first quarter. Mm -hmm. If he's not going to shoot, he's really no good to you. The one thing JR needs to always remember and understand, and, and I think he does, I, I think that the team from Ty down to your, your leader in LeBron, they do a great job of reminding Swish on the daily of what he means to this team. You know, when it mattered most, Swish was there that year that they won that title, mm -hmm. right to start the third, yep. back to back to back triples. Mm -hmm. He can change a game. Mm -hmm. He's valuable. And when he is able to take everything else mentally out, and play the aggressive style, right. you know, be looking for his shot, take his shot. Right. That's the switch this team needs. So speaking of JR, what do you figure went down between JR and Damon Jones that resulted in the soup opera, as it was called, the thrown soup? I I'm going to agree with you. I, I thought LeBron handled that the best. That's none of my business. <laughs> and uh, you leave it at that. You know, it happened. You move forward. You move on. Um, at the end of the day, we're professionals. You got to remember that, and we've got bigger things to to approach. With a Campbell of wrestling. <laughs> I'm a Campbell's girl, okay. but mm. I don't know what the soup was. <laughs> like I said, I stayed out of it. But they seem okay now. Jr. and Damon, they seem to yes. coexist. Oh, of course, and they always have. Yeah. I, I see that on the daily as well. Right. D. Jones, uh, he's one of the most comic relief 
individuals, yeah. fun-spirited, great guys to have around on the daily. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you're just not always in the mood, and and then you throw soup. Yeah, Skip, you, you see. thrown soup at me before. <laughs> That's you why we only allow so, soup up here. Man, sometimes I'm not in the mood for Skip Bulljack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're <Yeah>. all human. <laughs> but you throw hen on me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, absolutely man. not. It's too early. Party, your family. Yeah, yeah. Party. Go again? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks Thank so much you. for joining us, yeah. Sally. Thank you for Well, me. Michael Bennett, the Eagles repeat as Super Bowl champs. We'll discuss that with the Angelo Hall next.